Uh, hello, everyone. This is Joe Armstrong, and um, it's the top of the hour, so I opened up the lines here. Uh, I see a lot of people joining at the top of the hour as usual, so we'll just give a minute um, to let um, everybody hop on here, and then we'll get started. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, hello again, everybody. This, this is Joe Armstrong, and we're going to have the uh, the second June uh, Power Systems uh, Virtual User Group webinar today. Um, so uh, last week we did one. Uh, it was kind of IBM I specific on USB ports for IBM I, but this is a little bit more generic. Uh, we're going to cover today Power SC um, Security and Compliance, and I'm sure you're aware that. Uh, these days, security in the data center is just uh, becoming more and more of an issue. Um, and more recently with uh, GDPR, uh, things like compliance, maybe not as big a security thing there, but compliance becoming more and more of an issue. Um, just, just recently, things that I've gone through that have had uh, numerous um, GDPR uh, issues associated with them. So um, today, we're going to be covering a, a product that IBM has, Power SC. And we have uh, Stephen Dominguez with us today to talk about that. Um, he's going to really cover a lot on the, uh, the more recently released um, version of Power SC, and we've got um, some nice GUI in it to, to help with management. And Stephen's going to be doing a demo associated with this as well. So Stephen is one of our security experts um, in IBM Lab Services. He's been doing security for 10 years. He is. Um, a lead for IBM Lab Services and Security, um, consulting to numerous customers, over 300 customers, I think, throughout the world. Um, and uh, Stephen has presented for us before, uh, uh, quite a while ago, as you can see from his beginning slide here, he still refers to us as the AIX Virtual User Group. Um, now we're the Power Systems Virtual User Group. But, uh, but Stephen's presented to us before, did a fantastic job then. Um, this is uh, what he's covering really is going to be more AIX Linux associated. I asked Stephen about IBM I, and, and he's going to talk a little bit about that just to get us all straight on uh, how this fits into IBM I as well. But um, Steve also has an AIX security blog. Um, I think, uh, Stephen, if that's not on one of your notes, I'll send it out in the little chat box so everybody gets a, a link to that and, um, and your email um, in case there's questions that we don't get answered here. All right. So with that, I'll turn this over to Stephen, and uh, uh, welcome, Stephen. Oh, thank you, Joe. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to be focusing on Power SC Standard Edition 1.2. This was released uh, June 15th, just a couple of weeks ago. And so uh, uh, this will be the agenda for today. The first part uh, will just be an introduction to Power SC. After that, we'll take a closer look at what's new in Power SC 1.2. Uh, we'll do a demo, and then I'll just close out the uh, session uh, with a couple of last slides and also uh, open up uh, the call to some questions. 
Okay, so the first part is an introduction. So, you know, to bring, you know, the relevance of security, the significance of what's happening in the world in the world right now, uh, this is a, a really uh, interesting thing I came across this year. Uh, basically, Ed Scott is he's a, a one of the most top uh, renowned network penetration experts in the world. He has over 25 years of experience in, in network penetration. Uh, and uh, he's actually one of their technical leads at the SANS organization. And he was doing a really interesting webcast at the beginning of this year. And, and uh, so he was talking about network penetration. Uh, and he pr provided this presentation. At the end of the presentation, somebody asked him, they said, so are we losing the battle? And so if you see at the top, that's the kind of the title of the slide. And, and so they asked him, you know, are you know, computer users, uh, the computer industry, you know, in general, you know, are we losing the battle against hackers? And so what he said was, um, in, in response to the question, as the slide says, it says, we are a lot more secure in absolute terms than we were 25 years ago, but here's the problem. The bad guys have also been getting better. So the industry relative to the bad guys is not keeping up. Okay, so yes, I mean, the answer to that question, he didn't say yes, but it was actually yes. And so there's a really serious issue, cybersecurity. Last year, the United Nations declared uh, cybersecurity as a worldwide issue, not just even um, local to one particular of the world, but it's a worldwide problem. And so this uh, solution is really, um, the Power SC solution is very relevant to this huge worldwide issue. Okay, so this next kind of thing I want to share with you is is uh, it's a very important scheme. Uh, it's called the Center Net for Internet Security, a uh, 20 critical cyber security controls. And so uh, just recently, the University of Michigan published a um, basically it's like a uh, a security assessment for everyone. That's what they call it. And what it means, it's like, it's a way to verify your computer security for any, and it's also for everyone, meaning it's easy. Like they try to simplify, like, you know, computer con security can be extremely multifaceted and there can be, like, if you look at the various standards, it can be very overwhelming when you look at all of the requirements to truly, you know, implement you know a lot of these very uh, demanding uh, regulatory standards it's very demanding right and so what they try they wanted to distill from all of these standards what are the most critical things that are really relevant to all businesses and so one of the main components of their recommendations was this 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 list okay and this is relevant to all businesses like small medium and large and so basically with this, this is like the 20 critical security layers. These are the 20 areas of security that are really relevant to any type of organization, you know, using computers uh, with the need to protect those computers. And so anyway, these are the different uh, areas. What I've done in this chart is put in red what the Power SC um, uh, especially the the GUI because I'm gonna be talking about PowerC 1.2. So how is PowerC 1.2? How does it map? How does it relate to the 20 most critical areas of security? And so in red are the ones that it relates to. And and of course there's other things that are you know the PowerC GUI doesn't do everything. And as you can see there's something that are would be completely not relevant to PowerSC. Uh, and so th those are just not highlighted. So number three is, you know, one of the fun, and these are areas, there's, so this is a very, you know, multifaceted, each of one of these are, is a multifaceted area, but that number three is securing the server. So um, definitely, you know, PowerSC has a, a hardening tool so that your server, your endpoints, and that could be VIOS, that could be AIX, that could be now we have new support in PowerSC 1.2 for RHEL and SLES. And so those endpoints, we can, uh, there's tons of functionality to secure those servers, right? So number four, continuous vulnerability assessment and remediation. So there's actually some new support for how PowerSC uh, graphical user interface uh, actually integrates the um, uh, PowerSC tr Trusted Network Connect and Patch Management. 
So basically from uh, the new Power SC, we have the ability to assess your uh, VIOS and AIX endpoints for patches. And then if there is a problem with certain systems not being patched, then you can um, remediate from the GUI as well. You can apply patches from that GUI. Okay, number six is uh, maintenance and monitoring and analysis of audit logs. So, uh, so definitely we have a lot of logs. Real-time compliance uh, uh, generates audit logs. Um, and so um, we have those RTC events. Also, uh, there's another component in AIX, uh, very important for malware prevention, and that actually generates audit logs. So the, those audit logs are actually reported at the graphical user interface, so that's how it relates to number six, malware defenses. So number eight is extremely important. Uh, you know, a high percentage of security breaches involve malware. In the target 2013 breach, the hackers actually actually used multiple types of malware to basically, um, you know, to execute that breach. There was many, there was around five different pieces of malware involved. And so actually that is one of AIX's um, strengths. That's one of our, that's one of, probably one of our most sophisticated security defenses is a tool called Trusted Execution which provides um, um, what's called whitelisting uh, anti-malware defenses. And basically, um, the, the thing about a, a whitelisting solution is the way it works is that you're not dependent on, on, upon having to scan your systems for malware. Uh, it's not a scanning solution, it's a whitelisting solution really. And what it does, what that means is that when something executes that has not been explicitly authorized, the trusted execution can either detect that unauthorized executable or can actually prevent it if you want. There's there's multiple options. And so so anyway, this this uh, trusted execution actually now is um, you can configure it through the GUI and and uh, trusted execution events are actually reported to the GUI. So that's a great. Um, critical part of your security defenses and the graphical user interface is providing centralized ma management and also monitoring of that most critical security defense. Uh, you know, a standard, another number nine is a limitation of ports, protocols, and services, and of course, uh, the, the security hardening piece of um, the uh, Power SC provides the limitation of services. You can configure that and control the services that are running uh, on your endpoints. Okay, so so what is so that's how it relates to the most critical layers of your security um, uh, implementation. So what is the GUI? So basically, it's a web-based interface for centralized security monitoring and administration for AIX, RHEL, and SLES endpoints. Uh, the previous releases were 1150 and 1160, so it's relatively new. It's been out there for about a year and a half, and so this this new release is 120. You know, the initial release only provided the security hardening of AIX endpoints, but subsequent releases have provided additional features, and then we got a, a really a lot of great features in this 120 release. So this solution is completely and fully relevant to all AIX organizations. And of course now, if you're a power customer using uh, SLES and RHEL, it is relevant to you. Now there's a different um, subset of Power SE tooling, uh, and that's the, the, the tooling for I. And so Power SE has a completely separate, what I'm talking about today is 1.2, the standard edition. And so if you want to learn more about uh, the I solution, uh, just send me an email. I have um, a Terry Ford who uh, works for Lab Services, and he's the lead of the I team, and he'd be happy to help you with uh, how Power SEI can help you for your uh, power deployments. So anyway, so this solution is completely relevant to anybody using AIX, and now we have some new relevance to the power and rail and SLES. And then lastly, in my honest opinion, it's the most important security functionality ever released for AIX. Okay, so uh, let me explain that. Why do I say that? Well, the reason why I say that is achieving excellent security is, is very demanding. 
Okay, I recently did an analysis of a of a power customer and um this customer spends hundreds of millions of dollars in their security personnel and we were able to assess and we find we found a lot of um security defenses uh that that needed to be implemented uh so even even customers that have extensive resources uh you know a lot of times there's still a lot of um, a lot of times there's there's there could be still a lot of vulnerabilities so why is this important? Well, you know, achieving uh, excellent security, one of the things that demands is a systematic uh, implementation of, of your security defenses. Okay, so you, the problem is you don't want, if you have 100 endpoints, you know, let's say you've hardened, you've secured 99 of them absolutely correctly, but there's this one partition that is not secured correctly. You know, it's unfortunate because you know, normally in real life, when you're 99 out of 100, that's like an A plus. That's like outstanding, like in school. But when it comes to cybersecurity, you can be 99 out of 100, but still, but still suffer a breach. And the reason why I say that is that a professional hacker, what's what we refer to as an advanced persistent threat, they are rigorous and systematic in their pursuance of breaching your environment. There, you know, if you, you know, if your organization, you know, hardens absolute, does perfect security for 99 out of 100, the, the problem is that the hacker is going to find that one system that you didn't, you know, perfectly secure. Okay, and 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 so to speak to the, the to the nature of the hacker, once he finds that system, even if he doesn't have full access to penetrate the most critical uh, systems within your environment. He can still use that uh, penetrated system to possibly find another system in the network that he can, um, you know, compromise. And that's actually what happened in the target breach of 2013. The hackers gained initial access to a system in the target network that was away from the, their critical point of sale systems, and what they they used that as a stepping stone. They, from that system, they were able to perform scanning and reconnaissance of the environment to identify a vulnerable domain controller, Windows domain controller. So they use that initial system to find another vulnerable, vulnerable system, and then that domain controller then later provide additional uh, an additional pathway to get to the point of cell systems. So anyway, true excellent security, in order to explain my point, requires a rigorous and systematic deployment of all your security defenses that really demands perfection, right? And so that takes a lot of work. And that's where the Power SC graphical user interface comes in. It, it drastically, it exponentially reduces the effort of making sure that you are ironclad with your security defenses and there are no holes because it's a centralized solution. Okay, so anyway, uh, uh, let's go on. And so there's different components of Power SE. So first of all, let me explain what the term means, Power SE. Uh, S stands for security and C stands for compliance. So basically what Power SE is, it's a very generic term, but what it means, you're using the Power Platform and there's just a, it's a tool suite of security tooling that is has been provided for security and compliance um and so and as i said you know we have a, a an i suite of tooling as well so in the standard edition of power sc these are the main components which also includes the gui itself uh but the traditional components are these ones that i've listed here trusted logging is basically a component that provides um hypervisor based logging so, uh, you know, typically when you do when you do logging like with syslog or rsyslog, you're dependent upon typically a network connection that is used to transfer, you know, when you generate syslogs on your AIX system, typically they get, um, you know, tr uh, transmitted to a centralized log server. And so that's a, there's a network connection involved in that. Uh, the difference with trusted logging, it's basically providing that same type of functionality of centralized logging, but instead of using a network connection, it goes over the hypervisor. So in the case of network failure, you would still have your central log, uh, centralized logging being performed, um, and uh, but that's hypervisor-based. 
Uh, and so basically that's tool, uh, that's what that tool is all about. It uses vSCSI as the underlying transport mechanism. Okay, so uh, Trusted Network Connect and Patch Management, this is the patching solution of, of uh, Power SC. And so basically it's a solution uh, that basically allows you to apply uh, service packs and iFixes against your AIX endpoints. And now there's new support for, uh, you can uh, apply an iFix to a VIOS system. And then there's also new support for downloading uh, technology levels and uh, applying technology levels to your uh, endpoints. So, uh, and the way that works is that, you know, the, um, you know, the uh, clients report to the server, to the TNC server, what's installed on the server. The uh, TNC server has a compliant, you set up a, a compliance profile, like, like uh, the, for example, you would specify what iFixes are critical for what you determine for your security policy. And then you check your systems against the policy that you've defined. If a system is missing an iFix that is part of your policy, then that would be uh, identified and alerted at, at the TNC server. And now with all of this TNC functionality actually uh, communicates with the Power SC GUI. So the GUI uh, is now providing some interface uh, uh, critical uh, functions for interfacing into this TNC layer. Uh, Trusted Boot is a comp is a separate uh, component that basically uh, provides um, the ability to trust to verify a boot image whether it's changed or not, and so that's providing the uh, verification of the boot image. Trusted Firewall is a it's a basically what it really is it's a packet filter, and what it allows you to do it allows you to um, route packets that are on, um, you know, packets from different partitions uh, that are on different VLANs that reside on the same power frame. Uh, so that that's what that provides. The security advantage from that is that the packet is being routed by this trusted firewall uh, component and the, that packet actually doesn't leave the, the system. It actually stays within the hypervisor and it doesn't, that packet doesn't go out onto your network. So maybe in some very high security environments, that might be something uh, useful. Okay, this next component, the last two components are really probably, uh, probably one of the two most uh, popular components. Uh, one is the security and compliance automation tool. And uh, basically there's in parentheses, I have PSC expert. And so what underlines that tool is it, it boils down to the PSE expert command. And so what that tool does, it basically, they basically provide profiles. It's a profile based methodology of hardening your endpoints. So for example, you know, power customers have all different types of regulatory requirements, right? And so they can vary in the details of how those regulatory comp uh, compliance requirements need to be implemented. And so what, uh, what we have with PowerSC, we've developed different profiles based upon the different regulatory uh, compliance that, you, that a customer must meet. So for example, we, a power customer could be under PCI regulation. And so we have a, a PCI profile that you can use so that basically you apply this profile uh, against your, your endpoint and, and then it hardens the system. And it, it provides a standard uh, security hardening to help you become more PCI compliant. But you could be a customer that is not, you know, under PCI compliance. You could be under a different type of compliance, like for example, uh, for example, HIPAA. And so, in that case, we have a HIPAA profile that kind of addresses the um, details of what HIPAA needs to, uh, what you need to uh, fulfill with your HIPAA requirements. And so there's a separate profile. And so there's a, a several different profiles and I think I have a chart uh, upcoming that lists all of them. Okay, so that's, it's a, it's a fundamental part. And that of course really ties into one of the, you know, CIS critical controls, the securing of your server. That's a fundamental, essential part of security. The next one, uh, lastly, is the real-time compliance, compliance uh, component of Power SE. And so what that does, it basically monitors two things. Critical files of your system are monitored, AI system are monitored in real time. 
uh, for changes to those files, whether they be content, if the content of a critical security file changes, or if access to that file changes, uh, RTC in real time will detect that using a very sophisticated, highly efficient uh, kernel-based uh, method, method for that. It's a, it's a performance-wise, it's outstanding, very efficient. And the other thing that it does, as it's monitoring these files that are critical to your security, if, if, a, if a change occurs to one of these critical fundamental security files, it, if you've deployed the Power SE expert solution right above it, what it does, it verifies when a critical file change occurs, did that impact your security compliance posture? Okay. And so, um, um, so, th so the value here is that if a hacker, typically if a hacker got into your system, one of the things that he's going to want to do or need to do possibly is the deactivation of certain of your security defenses. So what we have here, real time compliance is actually monitoring the most critical files related to security configuration. And if anything changes that impacts your security defenses implemented by this Power SE expert component, you're gonna get an alert in real time. And now this alerting is actually being reported to the GUI, okay? And then you can even, there's other methods like uh, you can write that um, event to a local log on the, on the AIX system, or you can even get an email sent to you of the issue that occurs. Okay, so let me uh, just bring up some uh, a few terms uh, so you can understand some of the critical terms. Deep integration, so what's happened, deep integration means that uh, basically these components have been, the, the, in the previous chart, there was all these components historically around six or seven years ago that were implemented, but they didn't have a GUI, okay? And so now one of the things that's being, that's being done is the critical security tools that are relevant to power customers, what's being done is Power SC uh, Rocket Software, it, it working in, in cooperation with IBM, is basically providing deep integration of the most important security tooling. Okay, and what that means, we're, we're taking tools that don't really interface with Power SC and we're allowing them to communicate to each other. And what, what that provides you as an end user, it provides you a centralized point through the GUI to monitor, configure, and manage that, that uh, completely separate tool. And that, that once again ties into my main point that this is the most important security tool for AIX systems because, because it's drastically reducing the effort it takes to implement outstanding security. Okay, so those tools that are uh, basically talking to Power SE GUI, we call that a base product. So, for example, you know, uh, real time compliance is like a base product. Another example of that, AIX Trusted Execution is part of the base operating system, it's part of the, uh, you know, it's not really, uh, it's a separate product. And so we call those base products. A compatibility check. This is something that is really great about the Power SE GUI. So one of the things that you can do with the GUI, and it's really unique, uh, if you, let's say you have your, you, you set up the Power SE GUI, and you have your systems out there, but you say, hey Steve, you know, I'd like to know how my systems relate to the, for example, the PCI profile, but I don't want to actually change my endpoints. Is there a way to find out how my, uh, you know, using the Power SC defenses recommended in that that PCI profile? Is there any way of finding out how my systems actually uh, would stack up against that profile with act without actually changing my endpoints? And yeah, you can do that with a compatibility check. So that's one of the great features of the Power SC solution with Power SC Expert. You can do a compatibility check. See what your security defenses, the status of security defenses as they relate to your particular particular regulatory profile, find out that status without even have, having to change the endpoint or do any type of alteration on your uh, AIX systems. Uh, security control, this is just a general uh, information security term. A security control, that's a fundamental term we use, uh, security consultants use, and what that means that's simply the definition that that's something that you're doing, a measure that you're doing in order to try to control, to reduce typically risk. 
So it's a, it's a, it's a method, it's an action. It's a lot of times you can think of it as a, as a, a defense, a security defense or a measure or even a process like, for example, having employees, you know, get, uh, pro have security education. That's actually a security control. Okay, so that's that PSC expert. I refer that to that a lot. That's the tool that does the compliance, the security hardening. Okay, so that's uh, the actual tool that does all that magic. This is a uh, diagram that basically tries to create a, a picture of all this uh, diagram to help you understand. And so what we have here on the left, you have the Piracy uh, UI server, uh, which is also synonymous with the GUI, uh, the graphical user interface, okay? And what it's doing now in this 1.2 release is that it's talking to different types of endpoints. So, um, and what's occurring here, like if we take a, a, a in-depth look at the AIX endpoint, or now VIOS as well, What's occurring, there's an agent. There's, so there's an agent daemon that's on the AIX or VIOS endpoint, okay? And so that agent is basically interacting with the base products, okay? The, 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 those individual uh, components that are installed on the, on the local host, okay? And what it does, it interacts with them. It actually can configure them, okay? And so, so it interfaces with those base products and it provides um, basically a channel for those uh, tools to communicate to the UI server. Okay, so and then the other thing to remember uh, lastly is that TNC now interfaces with the UI server and you know what that looks like is that um, basically th there's a TNC client uh, which is another process uh, daemon that's running on the, on the endpoint and that's communicating to your uh, TNC server and what happens is the TNC server, there's another component which is, which is called the TNC PM, which basically downloads all of the service packs, iFixes, and technology levels. And so the TNC server is interacting with that patch management server to basically update those TNC clients. And that TNC PM is a NIM server. And so it's using NIM. Uh, and that the TNC PM is actually what can, con it's connecting to the internet to download the uh, service packs, technology levels, and iFixes. Okay, so that's a, a basic diagram of the topology of Power SC. What does it look like now? I'm, I'm going to bring up the 1.2 GUI. So th these pictures, I haven't. Uh, this just got released, and so I haven't been able, I haven't had a chance to update all my pictures. But it's 99. Uh, I'd say 95 percent. What, what these pictures look like are going to be almost identical to what you're seeing now on the new interface. But so what does the PowerSC GUI look like? And this is an older, definitely an older pick, but essentially what you have, you have this excellent interface, very intuitive, very easy to read. And what you do, you have a listing of systems. And this type, what's, what's, what is showing, showing me here is all the systems I have in my small little lab environment. And what you can do, as you see what I've done here under this, there's a compliance rule type, the second column on the left, uh, basically what it's saying that I have deployed this PCI custom uh, profile type against my uh, four partitions here. And my status is that I'm good, everything is fine. These profiles are just miniature uh, Profiles that I created, they're implementing three security defenses on each one of those endpoints, and they're, everything is looking good. Okay, um, so the PowerSC GUI, what does it do? You know, it allows you to apply, check, and remove, uh, you know, security defenses for one or more partitions. One of the things about the PowerSC GUI is that you can define groups, okay? So you can define groups of systems, okay? So for example, let's say you have a production environment, a dev environment, and a test environment, okay? Or let's say it's a cloud, we're in a cloud context. Maybe you have one tenant one with 100 partitions, tenant two with another 100 partitions. Each of those tenants in a cloud environment or each of those uh, environments in a traditional enterprise environment, 
they could have different requirements. Okay, you could have different requirements. And so one of the things that's really nice about the Power SE GUI is based upon a group-based deployment strategy. So for example, let's say tenant one in your cloud environment, uh, they need to, you know, they need to meet PCI requirements. So one of the things you do, you can, you know, basically apply a PCI profile and when you, you can basically like, for example, customize a profile and then ha have that customized profile applied to the PCI tenant, uh, the tenant that has PCI requirements, okay? And so let's say in a cloud context, you have a HIPAA tenant. And so let's say you go into your HIPAA profile, you do some modifications and you say, hey, I wanna, uh, I created a customized profile, which is one of the, one of the additional benefits of Power SE, you can do customization. You, so you can take that customized profile and then simply copy that profile only to your tenant two, which is a HIPAA compliant, right? So you have, uh, so that's one of the wonderful things of Power SE, that you can define any a number of systems to a group, okay? And that's, you, you come up with the group name and you, you map your systems to that group. And the other thing that's good is that sometimes a group needs to belong to maybe more than one group, okay? Uh, so let's say you have a system that is an AIX system and you want to put him in the AIX group, right? But let's say not only that, but he's a DB2 server group. And so you want to be able to filter your systems against the DB2 server type of filter. Well, what you can do then is simply create a DB2 server group and then map whatever systems you want to that DB2 group. So wonderful uh, functionality has been provided for the mapping of of systems to groups and you have, you can do any type of combination that you want. There's no restrictions there. Um, so separation of duties via administrative access control. Okay, so that's one of the other features of Power SE GUI. And uh, what that means is that basically if you want to, you can use groups to control administrators as to what systems they're allowed to access. So what that means, let's say you have some ad, you saw, let's say you have an admin that you only want him to administer production systems, then what you can do is specify a group uh, using Unix groups or LDAP groups, and you can say uh, you have to be in the security group to be able to uh, um, administer the production endpoints. And then what you can do if you have a development uh, let's say you want to have certain admins, but they are only going to touch your development endpoints. So what you can do then within PowerSC framework is that uh, you can define access control such that you could say, well, you have to be in the dev Unix group or LDAP group in order to only be able to uh, access, let's say, the uh, development part partitions. Okay, so you can just basically separate how administrators have access to which partitions. Um, as I said, you can customize. The next bullet is, is uh, uh, this GUI provides a configuration editor for customizing security profiles. So one, this is a very powerful uh, feature. So one of the things you can do, let's say you apply your PCI profile against your system and you apply, let's say you apply 11, def uh, 100 defenses, right? Let's say one of, that one of those security defenses has a conflict with one of your applications. One of the things you can do is simply take that standard PCI profile published by IBM, and what you can do is remove that one security defense that has a conflict with one of your applications, and then just create a customized version saying, saying my nine, you know, my 99 out of 100 defenses dot profile for PCI. Okay, so you can customize that. In addition to that, there's even uh, some of the recent uh, updates of Power SE GUI provides you not only to do that customization of what defenses you select, but you can actually change the how those defenses are implemented. Uh, so, for example, let's say you know you deploy, uh, let's say you put a password length requirement on 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 root, right? Let's say uh, out of the box when you deploy it with the PCI profile let's say the default uh, minimum length requirement is eight characters. Uh, let's say some application has a conflict with that and what you really want is seven. Well, the GUI, through the GUI, what you can do is actually customize that uh, um, 
setting eight and actually change it to a seven. And so when you deploy that policy, it's going to be basically implementing what you want for your environment. Okay, so you really have a lot of options here when it comes to uh, configure uh, configuring these policies to basically implement the configuration that really works for you and what's what what you really want for your environment. Um, so next thing, provide highly granular configuration options to handle simple to extremely complex AI and AIX environments, and that's because of the GUI of of what you can do with groups and how you can map a systems to different groups, how you can create customized profiles so that if you have different environments, different partitions with different requirements, all of that can be customized in the GUI. Uh, it provides deep integration with trusted execution and real-time compliance. Okay, so I kind of mentioned that before. And it provides extensive report, reporting options. And we'll take a look at that uh, coming up pretty uh, soon. Okay, so this is an example of what a compliance failure looks like. So as you see, there's, here's my four partitions and something happens with one of my security defenses. And what's nice, you get a, a red that is very obvious to see and then you have some really good detail. If you look at the detail, it says user attribute min length for the LP user should have a value of seven, but it is now zero. Okay, so, uh, so that's all being reported via the GUI. And as you can see, it's very easy to understand and, and, and so basically what you could do, if this actually occurred, you could simply redeploy your PCI V3 custom uh, profile and then that would correct the error. Okay, but it's, so it's all is easy to use, all easy to use and very intuitive. Okay, the next thing, this is what the profile editor looks like. So you have on the left, you have to see these are all the different profiles that are available. And then so what you can do is you basically gives you the ability to select, there's a checkbox kind of like in the middle, uh, there's a checkbox, and if you wanted to modify this particular profile, this is the PCI v3.xml uh, profile. You would simply, uh, you know, you know, decheck the security defenses that you don't want, and then you would save it as a different uh, name. And one of the great things that was actually released as well, in, in one of the recent releases, is, is the ability to actually mix profiles. Okay, so let's say uh, you have a customer you're a tenant in a cloud environment, and let's say you have a customer for their partition, they not only have to meet PCI requirements, but also HIPAA requirements. Well, what you can do, you can actually merge them. You can take the PCI and HIPAA and merge those two XML profiles and create a, um, a, a merged XML, customized XML that includes a completely different XML. So. Yeah, so you're definitely, you know, Rocket Software is doing a great job of providing full flexibility for what you want to accomplish for your, you know, irrespective of the complexity of your environment. Uh, group editor, so this is kind of a picture of what the group, as, as I said, you know, right here at four systems. And so if you look on the left, it says all systems. So, you know, I have four systems. So you always have that all systems. Uh, definition, but what I've done, I've created three groups. One of the groups I call test group, the other group I call test group two, and the last group I call test group three. And what I've done, each the first group, there's one system in that group, and the second group, there's two systems, and then there's th three systems in the third group that I created. Okay, and so you can click on the group, and then that allows you to see for those systems. In, in this example, uh, it shows you know the status of those four systems. Um, okay, scalability. So what's the scalability of the, of the Power SE GUI solution? It is excellent. It has excellent performance. If the GUI managing 500 endpoints, it has excellent performance for 500 endpoints. Performance is possible with 1,000 endpoints when using, when the groups that you're dealing with are smaller. Okay, so it can even scale beyond 500, but you just need to be careful because if you, uh, if you if you want to maintain that excellent responsiveness of the GUI, then you don't want to define really large groups. If you do, it'll still it'll still you know work with those large groups. It's just you're going to lose some responsiveness in the GUI. And then there's new performance. So this is kind of old data. So it's even better than what I'm indicating right here. There's even possible to improve performance. Uh, let's say you implement the new code. Let's say you have 3,000, 5,000 endpoints. 
And when you use a GUI, uh, let's say the performance is not quite what you want, uh, we can, Lab Services has performance. Uh, outside of um, uh, Power IT GUI, we have performance experts can, that can look at your power uh, deployment to find e e additional ways to improve the application performance. Uh, so uh, definitely, you know, we can help you if you want to scale to a large uh, environment. This is what the dashboard, so the dashboard is, is a GUI, it basically provides uh, an overall big picture of everything. Uh, so like, what are all the systems in environment? You know, how many compliance failures do I have? How many trusted execution events do I have? So it provides a big picture of the entire environment that you're monitoring with the GUI. Okay, so next section is 1.2. I'm going to discuss what, what has been released in the, in the newest release of the Power SC. Okay, one of the things that has been released is support for hardening, uh, you know, SLES uh, 12 SP3 and uh, Red Hat uh, 7.4. Uh, so we you have the ability to harden those endpoints to provide, once again, we can use the Power SC expert solution to harden those endpoints. Um, we also have the ability, the GUI actually now interfaces with Audit D on the Linux, uh, which is the Audit daemon for the uh, uh, Linux slash and RHEL endpoints, so that's new. We, there's a new compliance profile. This is a new Power SE Expert Security Harding profile for GDPR, okay? So uh, if you're a GDPR environment and you want to take measures to deploy security defenses to help protect the data uh, related to your GDPR, GDPR requirements. There's a new uh, profile for Linux and AIX if you want to better uh, provide security defenses for your GDPR related uh, power environment. Uh, this next listing is all of the new uh, functionality within the GUI. So basically there's a new uh, security measure for a SOC proxy server. Uh, so what this happened, what this allows is for the agents and the server to communicate through a SOX pro proxy server to provide additional uh, security uh, options. Uh, this is kind of uh, a very advanced kind of security measure. The existing communication between the endpoints and the uh, UI server is highly secure. It uses, um, you know, uh, industry, you know, NIC, uh, um, FIPS approved uh, encryption algorithms to encrypt that traffic. It has mutual certificate uh, authentication. So in that communication, the GUI is verifying that the endpoint is authentic, but the endpoint is also using a certificate to verify the authenticity of the UI server. And um, there's a special a numeric, what's called a nonce, so that there's a unique nonce used in also the additional measures that anytime they communicate they have a secret number that is used and that also uh, uh, verifies that the that the client and the server are authentic so there's multiple methods of absolutely securing that communication uh, there's a new uh, second bullet is a new option for encrypting emails generated by the power se gui server um okay so uh, another point, a wonderful point is they, the next point is they provided adding, adding the viewing of the date of the security key store certificate for endpoints and when they expire. Okay, so underlying all of this communication and certificates, and one thing that you have to always be a care, careful of anytime you're using certificates, certificates for any type of service is that they expire. And so sometimes that can be, you know, there's been many companies uh, that they've actually lost out, they've had outages due to certificates expiring, right? And so you don't want an expiration of your security channel. Uh, and so the GUI is providing an interface so you know exactly when your endpoint certificates are expiring so you can replace them before they expire. Um, expanded support for customizing profiles. So, um, you know, you can now view the details of a particular uh, um, rule, which is a, a security defense, and change one or more of the rule arguments, including the rule names and description values. So they're, you know, they keep doing more and more for customizing the uh, the Power SE layer, uh, Power SE expert layer of Power SE. The next uh, bullet point is enhancements to the security page to streamline and improve 
the ability to monitor endpoints. And so we'll see that uh, shortly. It's, it's, a, it's more, the user interface is more intuitive and provides better information than the previous release. Uh, there's the new reporting features. There's an interactive timeline to report security compliance and patch status events for your endpoints. So that, that's a really in, intuitive way to you know, look at the reporting of your systems. So TNC with Power SC, this is not the GUI, but the TNC component itself has a lot of new great features that were released. Um, so the big one is that now there is in the GUI, you can verify and update your endpoint, uh, your VIOS and AIX endpoints using the TNC layer. Okay, so this is drastically can help you uh, reduce the effort in uh, patching your systems. Uh, the next bullet is that uh, iFix support has been added for VIOS with the TNC. So now you can patch your systems through the TNC with iFixes. Uh, you also have the added ability to patch systems with a group of interim fixes and APARs specified in what's called an iFix or APAR group. So you can, if you have a set of, si of iFixes, you can say, you can give it a name and then basically, uh, have a, a particular endpoint uh, updated with the, that group of iFixes using a single name. The next bullet is there's, in addition to applying service packs, that's always been there forever. Now you can actually uh, change the technology level of a TNC client, which is would be your AIX endpoint. Uh, extended support for policy-based updates Okay, so so one of the things that you can do is have, like, as a TNC as admin, you define what is the policy for your endpoints. You dictate what iFixes you want to require for an endpoint, and then what you can do, once you define that, you can simply tell the TNC interface to update a system according to policy. Uh, so it's, it's just more an intuitive kind of uh, feature that's being provided right there. Okay, the next one is there's some uh, enhancements with PS. PSConf, which is one of the TNC commands, and it basically gives a better way for uh, the TNC server to communicate with the TNC PM, more efficient and excellent responsiveness and uh, interaction between the P uh, PSConf, which is on the TNC server. And the TNC PM, which I previously mentioned, it's that the TNC PM is what downloads all of the service packs, iFixes, and uh, technology levels. Okay, so this is another completely different feature that was provided in this recent release, which is the REST API support. Okay, so some customers have their own applications that they developed in-house to basically monitor the environment. And so you can use that if you have that type of REST API-based solution, you can now connect into the Power SE GUI to use your homegrown uh, application to talk to and interact with the Power SE GUI. Scalability, um, so, you know, it has excellent uh, scalability, and then also uh, there's now more uh, scalability support for multiple TNC servers uh, in the TNC layer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly run through this demo. Okay, let's see here. Let me bring over my uh, system here. Oh, okay. Okay, so here we have the GUI. Let me try to okay. So um, okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna issue some events here. Oh, Stephen, did we lose you there? Uh, no, I'm generating some security events on my endpoint. Oh, you are, okay. Uh, 
Okay, there's one. Oh, okay. Okay. So, see what I've what I've done here. Okay, let me bring over how that was created. So, what's what's occurring here is that um, okay. Okay. So, what I did here is. Uh, what we have here is that we have two components connected uh, that uh, Power SE GUI is monitoring here. We have the RTC. You see the check mark means that it's enabled and it's interfacing with the Power SE user interface. And then we have trusted execution. Okay. And so what I did here, RTC monitors critical security files on AIX. And so what I did. I basically altered a critical security file. Okay, so I, I echoed in pound test to Etsy security user. And within, I would say around 10 seconds, it actually was rendered here. Okay. And as you see, Etsy security user was, was altered. Okay. Now, the other thing that I did was um okay i am this is a so that's an rtc monitored event okay sc security is really critical okay that's a very critical uh use a security file you can drastically affect your system and so this is a critical file to protect um te prevents malware from being executed okay so what i did in order to generate that type of event I ran a script, okay, but I ran an unauthorized script, okay. So I ran the, the script called flu.ksh under temp. Uh, now, in this case, it's not a malicious script, but it could be malicious if it had malicious code in it. But the point is, is that this is an unauthorized script, and so that could be any type of unauthorized executable library kernel extension or script, and what's going to happen is TE will detect that, okay. So as you see here, tamflu.kes age executed. See, it's telling you the operating system has allowed to execute a, a non-trusted file. And, and in this case, it's a script, but that could apply to any type of executable. That could be a binary executable, a kernel extension, a library that is not authorized or not known to the system will be detected in real time. Okay, so those are a couple of the critical features. Okay, uh, let me show you the other tabs. As you see here on the left, there's the groups. Okay, so uh, I have a dev. Uh, now in this case, you know, uh, I just got this code um, just recently, so I wasn't able to put more systems. But we have one system. But you, of course, you could have a thousand. You could have thousands of systems right here. Uh, but you see, I created three groups: one called dev, one called prod, one called test. Okay, and you can map different uh, multiple systems to that if you want. Uh, here's the compliance uh, feature. So you see what I've done here, I've, I've created a custom uh, profile of GDPR. Okay, and I have it, it's passing right now and uh, it's deployed upon my AIX endpoint. So this is what the compliance, uh, you know, uh, looks like. Um, let me let me show you the we have if you want to there's different types of reports that you can generate um, this is like a compliance report a file integrity report a combined compliance and uh, file integrity management report and then of course there's the new features of the timeline report okay and then one of the really popular features is this uh, feature right here uh, it's, this is the customization tool, right? Uh, and so, uh, for example, let me show you. Here's my customized profile. So I took GDPR is actually has many, I don't know, it's around 100 security defenses. What I did, I created my own version that ha had one just for demo purposes. And so this is the one that I've created. And so this is my customized, okay? Uh, and you see right here, you can, if I wanted to, once you create your profile, you see the this function is really 
important. Copy that profile to group members, okay? So now currently that uh, it's already copied, right? But if you had a customized profile, you can select which group of systems that you want that copied out to, okay? Um, uh, let's create a new profile. Custom two, because uh, that, that'll be my new profile name, confirm. Oh, okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead. So what you do is first we wanna go, let's go to this uh, GDPR, or let's do a PCI V3. Okay, um, uh, so let's say right now, here's my, oh, Okay, I'll, let me go back to GDPR, actually. I'll be, make better sense. Here are all my GDPR settings, and here's my custom, this new one I'm trying to create. So basically, what you can do is select various um, security defenses and apply them to, see, I'm applying them to custom to GDPR profile. And then you simply save. Now, one of the features, as I said, this is simply customizing the set of defenses that you're using. But one of the other things that you can do is modify these arguments. Okay. So if you want to change the name, the description, a script. Now, this is very important here because these are the arguments. Let me try to find something a little bit more straightforward, like a. <clears throat> um, like a minimum length of password. Okay. Let me bring up a PCI. Okay, PCI. Okay, UMass, that's fine. So let's take a look at UMass. You see, so what's happening with this is that if you want to change the name, description, or, or usually you're not going to change the script. You can, if I guess, if you want, but normally you, you don't alter that. But what you could do is a UMass, okay? So if you want to change what UMass is being implemented with this security control, you could alter that. And so, so uh, you know, in previous releases, you couldn't do this, but now you can do this with this new customization of functionality and then copy it out to any endpoint. Okay, so there's a lot to this GUI and I'm just hit, uh, covering you know, the, the, the top surface, the tip of the iceberg. What I do need to do is close out. There's some things I want to talk about at the end and then over, have, provide some time for some uh, questions so I can answer. Okay, closing. So one of the things that we do provide in lab services, we pro provide extensive support for services. We have I security service. My, my specialty is really AIX. And we actually have a new service for HANA uh, customers. Uh, this is a security roadmap of all the services we provide. This is the most important service of all the services we provide, the AIX security assessment. Basically what you do, what we do in the service, we analyze one or more partitions in your uh, environment, BIOS, AIX, we analyze them. Uh, rigorously looking for uh, ways to improve your security. Uh, it provides a comprehensive uh, view of your security defenses to make sure there are no holes in your AIX security layer. So this is very important. Before you try to you know, improve your security, you really want to understand what's happening in the AIX security layer. And so that's, that's what this service provides. We have identity management services. If you're a customer that wants help with integrating Active Directory uh, to your systems, or if you uh, want to use an IBM LDAP server to, to have full compatibility using a, an IBM solution, which is actually AIX provides that under the uh, maintenance agreement, uh, under your standard software maintenance agreement, you can have use ISDS at no additional cost. We provide services for integrating that. Uh, if you want to, a lot of customers are using, using sudo out there for controlling administrative privileges. We have services to help you centralize that sudo using LDAP so you're not having to manage multiple sudo um, config files across all of your AIX endpoints. AIX auditing, one of the critical controls that I shared uh, uh, previously, the CIS credit controls, is the, is the monitoring of your systems, okay? And so the most powerful 
you know, one of the most powerful tools that provides the most extensive type of monitoring, security monitoring, is this AIX auditing subsystem of AIX. And so we provide a solution, which we've actually, a lot of companies have requested this service recently. And so that's one of the critical, that relates to one of the critical CIS security controls that all types of organizations should be implementing. Another thing that we do is malware. One of the controls also in that top 20 list from the CIS, from the uh, Center, Center for Internet uh, Security, is the malware. Uh, so you're, you're, you know, all organizations should be addressing malware. And antivirus is just one part of that. There's other types of malware, okay? If, you're just, if you just have antivirus defenses, that's really not good enough. You have to have more comprehensive uh, defensive defenses and and so trust execution is is a great solution to drastically reduce the security risk uh, related to malware. Role-based access control that's one of the, the critical CIS controls the control of administrative privileges and we have a, a service for that. Uh, as we discussed today, you know we took a look at the GUI uh, and so there is a um, uh, we provide a proof power SE GUI proof of concept service. And what that is, we come on site, we work with you for like two or three days, we set up the GUI, we set up some endpoints like in a test environment, we show you how to do it, we show you how to use the most critical functions, we get we show you how to integrate trusted execution. So there's a lot, I mean, I can't cover everything. I would actually need a few days to cover everything related to the GUI. And that's where the GUI proof of concept service comes in. It really makes it easy. You know, you can always do this on your own using informa uh, the Information Center and Redbooks, but if you want to make everything 10 times easier, uh, please contact me because we contact me because we have a Power SE GUI proof of concept service. So the proof of concept is that first just installing it, showing you all the critical functions of the GUI in a sandbox environment. But let's say that you really like the GUI and you want to implement it across all of your environments, not just in your sandbox area that we do the proof of concept. Well, that's where we have the proof. Is, if you want additional help in integrating that solution, to throughout your environment. We have the integration service, which is really an extension of the proof of concept service to help you integrate the GUI solution to include all of your endpoints in your power related environment. Lastly, we have a TNC patch management workshop, which is uh, basically, uh, once again, it, it we will help you uh, teach you how to install the server, the TNC PM, TNC IS, the clients, how do we contact Fix Central. We make that, we provide a process to make all that easy, and then also we kind of provide knowledge transfer so you understand the most critical parts of TNC management and administration. And then all the, on the right, you know, if you have something, a security, AIX security type of need that doesn't fall within the standard roadmap, well, we have an ad hoc integration assistance service so that if there's any type of general security assistance with AIX that you desire, uh, you can request this integration ser assistance service, and that's like an open-ended general technical uh, consulting services uh, service. As I said, uh, lab I work for Lab Services, and we actually just provided a new um, uh, service for uh, HANA. And so what this is, this is a SLES security assessment for HANA, and what that does, it basically analyzes uh, SLES for the uh, security defenses on a SLES system so that your HANA uh, deployment is secure from the operating system perspective. Okay, so last December, um, Susie released a, um, uh, a hardening guide, uh, uh, an official hardening guide for SLES systems in which HANA is running on them. And so what we've done, we've abstracted all of their recommendations and we put it into this process so that basically instead of you having to spend several weeks analyzing that recommendations guide and seeing how you stack up against that uh, SLES uh, guide, hardening guide for your HANA deployment, we actually come in, we quickly, uh, you know, analyze the system and we provide a report for you. Uh, and, and so that way you don't have to do all the hard work and spend several weeks to try to implement those security controls we provide. An analysis of you, analysis of your SLES partition so you quickly understand what defenses need to be deployed for your HANA deployment. Uh, so this is just a couple of uh, additional slides here. Uh, lastly, okay, so uh, I'm ready to end here. Lastly, okay, I have a lot of links for Power SC. If you go to my security blog, I have a link up at the upper left. You're going to see a links tab. 
and uh, you just click on that and you can see all my different links. If you want to contact me, uh, of course, even though, you know, I do have a blog called securitysteve.net, but I am an IBM employee. And so you can contact me at estoming at us.ibm.com if you want any type of AIX or in this case, HANA as well, if you want any type of assistance. And if you want to find more links about Power SD, go to my links section, look under general AIX security. I have uh, I have the link out there for the Power S the old Power SE Red Book, and then also uh, I also have a link out there for the Power SE Information Center. And there's I think an additional one or two other links out there related to uh, Power SE. And I guess I believe that's all I have. So I guess at this time, Joe, we can open it up to questions. Okay, Steve. So we got um, uh, quite a few questions here. Um, and you can um, open up the window yourself if you like. Um, I can kind of guide you through some of these. Uh, to open up the window yourself, Steve, on the control panel, you go over there and take that um, little icon where it says the question tab. And then on the right-hand side, there's two icons. Take the little box with the arrow one. It'll undock that for you. But um, so I think the first question is uh, related to support. Uh, the question was, it, does this support Ubuntu? And you mentioned uh, SLES and Red Hat. So I'm, I'm going to say no. But is there any no. any work of future support? Um, I I, uh, I can't comment on that. So um, so I, I would have to ask uh, if the person who has that question, uh, just send me an email and I can fall back on that. But that's out of my uh, kind of authority. Uh, I, I could uh, submit that question to Rocket Software. Okay. So, uh, and you mentioned that this was uh, both takes care of uh, AIX, Linux, and the iOS partitions as well, right? Yes. Does, does the, uh, yeah, the iFix and also the, the security hardening. Okay. Uh, what about HMC security? So, HMC security, no, it it's not. Um, it doesn't enter, it, uh, yeah, it's not really like an HMC security uh, solution. Now, if you want to improve your HMC security, if you go to my link section at the, I believe at the miscellaneous, there's a developer works article uh, that HMC development, uh, HMC, there is, um, it's really a simpler, uh, from, from a, a computer security perspective, it has a, a less controls, okay, because you're, you still have to secure that HMC, but you have different considerations because you don't have the, your data, your sensitive data is not there. So that's, um, there's a lot less uh, security defenses that are needed because you don't have your critical data. So if you want to improve your HMC uh, security, I would recommend look at my links page and I have an HMC developer works um, article. Uh, there's one uh, kind of reference uh, there's one reference developer works article that goes through in one page and it kind of describes all the things you can do from the HMC security perspective. All right. And then if you um, want any additional assistance, uh, please contact me with my email. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's narrow down or, or broaden the, the constraint of what systems will actually support this on. Uh, so all, all the power systems, AIX, um, Linux, what about our LC systems that run, you know, without uh, PowerVM? Does that, do those support uh, PowerSC? It's, it's really part of the licensing. It's a, it's based upon, like, when you're entitled to this, um, it's always been the case where it's a PowerVM, like, you need to have this PowerVM licensing and also the AIX Enterprise Edition uh, like if you want it freely licensed and supported, then uh, it, uh, unless something has changed, uh, you would typically it's in the context of Power VM. You have Power VM licensing and also AIX Enterprise Edition licensing. Right. So, so it's uh, so I would say no. If if uh, that person wants a clarification, simply sending me email. I can have a more kind of rigorous uh, uh, response to that. Okay, so let me see if I can cut it up a little bit. So Power SC comes with AIX Enterprise Edition. If you don't have AIX Enterprise Edition, you can purchase Power SC as a product. Um, if you're yeah. running only Linux, you can purchase Power SC as a product, but it only runs under Power VM. So uh, or it requires Power VM. So 
so it will only run on our on our regular systems um, or our L our L model well, it'll, that have no it, it'll it'll run but if you want free if you oh, if you, you can just want it free yeah if you want it free then you want it, you need to be using Power VM and have AI Fender Press Edition I see I see, but, I see. okay so you could run it under an LC system you just would have to purchase the Power SC product yeah. oh, okay. All right. right, right, right. It's all in the everything is done at the operating system layer. It's uh, the hardware uh, for most, like for everything I talked about today. Pretty much, it's trans. It's not the hardware isn't involved. It's all happening in the operating system layer, the okay. AIX operating system layer. Okay, good. So it doesn't require require Power VM to run. From a technical, uh, yeah, you would need okay. that if you want free free uh, locking commands. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, there are a couple of questions about um, Big Fix and if it um, integrates into Big Fix at all. So uh, currently, there's no uh, published uh, interface to Big Fix. Um, there is a REST API support. Okay, so uh, that is some, if you want an application to talk to the GUI, uh, there's the REST API support, but there's no published support of big fix I mean so big fix and, and TNC they are overlapping solutions okay they both provide the for management of patches but they're different uh, they're different but they also overlap uh, and so they you know they each have their you know functionality and, and the, there's overlapping functionality but they're also different okay uh, question here, I'm just going to read, is there a Power SC Q Radar uh, SIEM plugin for AIX, IBMI, and Linux on Power as well as uh, a Guardium file activity monitor? Okay, so it does have a Q Radar. Um, there is functionality to enable uh, so that when the Power SC related events are generated, it is able to be recognized by Q Radar. So there is support for that. Guardian, uh, I have not seen that, but um, uh, I, I can follow up on that. And uh, but I've, I've never seen support for that. Okay. But that's sure. something that could. So if, now, once again, anything that if there's not the current functionality for Rocket Software has been implementing feature after feature after feature. So if there's something that you want in the product, definitely let me know, and I can work with Rocket Software to to ask them to see if they would like to uh, implement the feature that's needed. Okay. There, there's several questions, um, Stephen, about uh, use with Intel, um, whether any part of this runs on Intel, whether you can manage any part of Intel systems as part of it um, with PowerSC. Not currently. Not currently. Uh, in the, there possibly could be support for Intel in the future. That's a possibility uh, that once again, that if there's a specific re requirements and interest, if those details can be sent to me, I can forward that to Rocket Software. Okay. Uh, is there a profile for NIST? Uh, not explicitly for NIST, but implicitly, yes. Okay, so um, uh, there's not an, what we have here is a um, PCI, HIPAA, GDPR, um, NERC. Um, and so those are the main profiles that most customers are using. SOX COBIT is another one, GDPR, yeah. There's a DOD, actually, a STIG, uh, the De Defense Department uh, Unix STIG standard. Those are the compliance uh, types that we have. Uh, a lot of that, a lot, basically the NIST requirements, uh, a lot of the NIST requirements can be implicitly fulfilled through the existing profiles. Uh, if there's, um, that's something where if there's a need, uh, uh, if there's a request for that. So let, let me kind of, you know, uh, say that the NERC actually came out the NERC, you know, there was a customer years back that wanted a NERC profile and they interacted with IBM and we actually uh, implement that for them. So if you have a requirement, uh, please send me your information so I can use you as a reference to uh, Rocket Software to get what you want implemented. Okay. 
Um, I'm just kind of going through these. Uh, oh, there's one if, if um, remediation could be scheduled uh, rather than fixing it live. Yes, there is a functionality for uh, doing a time-based remediation. And there's also other features I didn't uh, talk about. For example, when you patch, uh, so one of the unique features that the Power SD GUI provides is the ability to schedule trusted execution for activation and deactivation. So what I mean by that is trusted execution is your you know, very powerful malware defense. And so when you are running that on your system, you can't patch systems. You have to actually deactivate it before you can patch systems. And so one of the great features of the PowerSC GUI is that you can actually like deactivate trust execution, trusted execution across a group so that you can do your patching. And then at a later uh, time, uh, the GUI will automatically reactivate the trusted trusted execution feature um, for your environment. All right. Um, you mentioned the the limits, you know, 500 endpoints, um, very good, uh, up to 1,000 if you keep small groups. Um, if you have more than 1,000 endpoints, what's your what's your best practice for managing that? Multiple instances or something different? Well, it depends on the groups, right? And so um, if you, you can go beyond 1,000 as long as the best practice is to have smaller groups. Okay, so uh, so the issue is, let's say you have a group, let's say you have 3,000 endpoints, and then in one of the groups, you have 2,000 endpoints. So when you click on that 2,000, that group of 2,000 endpoints, well, it's a larger set of data that has to be rendered. So that's when you're gonna see lag, right? And so, uh, so the kind of the idea is that if you click on a group, if you, know, if you maintain a smaller group count, then you can simply, then you'll get, you're gonna get the better performance when you interact with your groups, when you go beyond the thousand partition, uh, partitions. Okay. Uh, there's another question on, you know, we talked about big fix. Uh, how is this compatible with AIX live update? Um, I haven't seen anything explicit with respect to Power SE uh, and the live update. I mean, I would, I would say it is, it is compatible to that, but there's no explicit interface with the live update functionality. Okay, so, um, so I guess that, that's what I would say with okay. respect to that question. Um, so you mentioned, so there's a question here about, you know, you, you put in your, uh, in your demo, the thing with the et cetera security file, user file. And yeah. uh, the question is, you know, what if somebody with authority um, is actually making a change to that file for some reason? Um, or, a, or a change gets made by a CH user or something modifies the file. Do you still get an alert then or does it know somehow or? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's going to alert. If you change that file, it's a, alerted irrespective of, it's a critical file. And, and from a security perspective, you just, it has to, you always have to make sure that that change is not impacting your security defenses. Now, if you don't want the message generated, then you can do like a stop SRC against the RTC daemon. And then that way, when you change the file, the daemon, there's a daemon running on the AIX endpoint that's do, doing all the communication, then the daemon will not report, um, you know, it's not going to uh, send out a report because the daemon isn't monitoring that file. But, but there's not a way, that's a good, that's an interesting request, and so that could be a functionality request to Rocket Software. Okay, but no, it's gonna, for security reasons, and that's really good, because one of the things you gotta consider is that hackers gain root access, they compromise accounts, and one of the typical things that occurs with hackers is that they're gaining access to those accounts, so there is a danger in excluding a particular account from modifying that critical file and not detecting it, because you could have a case where a hacker has compromised and taken the access of that person that you actually do trust and the hacker is now using that account and you you don't you want to know that if that file has been changed you know so there's kind of a security issue involved but ultimately if you want to allow 
you know, there's something that possibly could be done to provide a, a functional new feature so that you can make an exception. And so that's something, uh, um, uh, yeah, definitely I can follow, uh, please send me a note uh, for the person and I can forward that to Rocket Software and, and see if that's possible. Okay. Um, the question is, um, can we push um, technology level and SP updates from Power SC or from the TNC server? Okay, so on the Power SC GUI, there's only basically two things that you do from the GUI with, with respect to TNC in the current release. So it just released just a couple of weeks ago. So this is brand new functionality. And so the two things that you can do from the GUI is you can select an endpoint and run a TNC a verify option, which when you run it, 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 it identifies how many iFix are, are not installed on the endpoint that should be installed on the endpoint. Okay, so that's one of the functions it does. The other function it does is for whatever iFix are not installed that should be installed, the TNC GUI, you can say in, update the endpoint with respect to the, the iFix requirements, okay? And it's iFixes that we're dealing with. It's only iFixes from the GUI. And that's the most critical part of your patching is those iFixes. Now, all the other functionality with respect to service packs and technology uh, levels, if you want to change your endpoints, you do that from the, not the GUI layer, but from the TNC server layer. Uh, the TNC server at the command line, you would issue the command to update your endpoints with the uh, service packs that you want uh, and also the technology levels that you would want to be deployed to your endpoints. And that is all coming from the TNC server command line interface and not the Power SE GUI um, interface. But in the future, like, and just bear in mind that this is this is a brand new functionality. Going forward, I would speculate that more and more, this is not an official statement, this is my opinion, but more and more, they're going to be adding additional TNC GUI-based functionality into the Power SE GUI, okay? Uh, but from a development perspective, you know, there's tons of security defenses there's just, it takes time to integrate all of this stuff, but over time, and as it's been seen with PowerSA GUI, they're just adding more and more really great functionality to that GUI. All right. And you mentioned Rocket Software several times. One of the people um, asked, who is Rocket Software? This is the third party that's actually doing development of the tool, right? Yeah, so uh, they're basically leading uh, the effort here and. Uh, and so they're, yeah, they're really working with IBM um, uh, security. Um, actually, I interface with them as well. So I, I, I'm IBM Lab Services. And so our team as well, uh, in Lab Services, we go on site and we help power customers. And in interacting with co power customers, we get all sorts of requests for functionality. You know, as a, as a software developer, you know, you come up with ideas, but ultimately it really requires to really achieve the solution that everybody wants, you really want to talk to a lot of people. And so with Lab Services, we're on site interfacing with all different sorts of customers that use all different sorts of power implementations. And so we get a lot of, you know, creative ideas from our customers and, and we're able to give some feedback as to the type of things that customers want out there. And we feed that to Rocket Software to help. Uh, and, and a lot of the functionality that you see now and the GUI is an implicit byproduct of, of that interaction with customers. So it's, it's really an evolving thing, and, and Rocket Software has done a great job in listening to you know, the customer request and implementing a lot of the features that are really most important to securing uh, customer environments. All right. So I think we have time for just a couple more. Um, here's one. It's um, from your demo. How do you add the foo.ksh file to the authorized whitelist of executable programs? So, so it what says, you if do, we add legit homegrown scripts for admin functions, do we need to follow this process for whitelisting our new scripts? Okay, so trust execution, yes. Yeah, so what basically trust, the whitelist is a database. The database is located at Etsy Security TSD, TSD dot dat. Okay, and that is your database listing all your executables known to the operating system. 
okay? And so what you would do is there's a trusted check command that you would use to add new, like that foo.ksh, you could use a trusted execution command to add that foo file into the database so that way it wouldn't, it would basically become whitelisted, okay? And so there are a lot of, uh, I typically spend one or two days with customers going through all of the TNC functionality. There's a, a myriad of options. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. And as I said, there's different types of executables. You have shell executables, binary executables, kernel extensions, and libraries, okay, that are being detected. You have all sorts of different um, uh, options for how you implement the whitelisting. You can even say another methodology is specifying that certain subdirectories are authorized execution subdirectories. Okay, it's a path value, and it's basically basically a listing of all of the authorized uh, uh, subdirectories that anything has to be that has to reside in in order to execute. So that's what's called a trusted uh, path. A trusted execution path, and so that's kind of that's kind of invokes kind of like a different methodology of uh, implementing the whitelisting. Uh, so there's all different, yeah. There's all different types of functionality. There's even one other thing that's really unique. Like I, I, as I said, trusted execution is one of AIX's. I would say, from a security risk perspective, it's probably the most, the best of all the. It's the most sophisticated security tool I've come across with AIX of all of them. One of the reasons. Why is there's a way to actually when you that database as I said that's where your your flight listed executables reside you can actually lock down that database so not even root can alter that database okay there's there's an option for deactivating because that database basically your trusted execution the quality of that implementation depends upon the specification of that database if a hacker modifies that database that's actually compromising the integrity of your trusted execution solution and so it becomes critical to protect that database right and so what's great about the tool it's possible to lock down that database from mod modification by all processes on the system including root so that's a really advanced wonderful feature um, uh, very highly sophisticated, and of course, because you're used to using whitelisting, you're never going to have if a um, uh, you know all any any kind anything that executes must be registered in order to uh, not be de not be detected, right? And so, it, no no type of malware will be able to defeat that because we use cryptographic checking to ensure that any kind of unauthorized executables do not execute. Okay. So I have one more question I want to ask you um, before we wrap up, even though we're a couple minutes over, um, Stephen. And that's, um, you mentioned all the different um, things that, the services that you provide. Um, in this particular case, a person's asking, is the proof of concept service complimentary? So I, I guess I'm not sure which of those services were complimentary and which of them were not. Um, are any of them complimentary or is the uh, proof of concept one? Okay. So uh basically if you're an ibm power customer uh if you're interested in a service send me a note a lot of times depending upon uh, what you're purchasing currently maybe past future uh, a lot of times i would say 60 percent of the time i work under uh, services that are freely provided through ibm sponsored programs be like power care program and so, uh, depending upon your hardware eligibility, it's any of the services that I've shown can possibly pr be provided at no cost. And so, and that's where, you know, let me, and, and if you're not currently, uh, you know, eligible for free services, you might be eligible in a couple of months. And so that's where, if you're interested in any of our services, please just send me an email and that'll, uh, and then I'll, I'll kind of investigate and make sure we uh, look at all the ways that we could possibly get any any of the services listed at possibly no cost, depending upon your eligibility for uh, services provided free by IBM. Okay, so with that, uh, we're out of time. And uh, I want to thank you, uh, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, and I want to thank you, Stephen, especially for providing us the, the, this, this information. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Yep. And uh, I don't have yeah. next next month set up yet, um, so you'll have, have to wait for the invite for that, everyone. But I um, hope you're having a great summer, and um, you will see something for next month. So long.